Ram Das once said, if you think you're enlightened, spend a week with your family. <laughs> Now I'm not claiming to have reached the height of consciousness, but the time I spent with them in Korea was magical. So I had a few ground rules for this trip. One, avoid any arguments. Number two, get to know more of Amma's side of the family. And three, spend pure, uninterrupted quality time together. Sometimes hanging out with family can be triggering because these relationships are a breeding ground for old resentments and bad habits. They know exactly what buttons to press because they're the ones who put them there. <laughs> and since we've known our parents for so long, the memories and narratives we created of them are often the strongest and most visceral in our minds, including all the good, the bad, and the most triggering. <laughs> But it's never too late to create new memories with our parents, especially if we're still able to. And that is exactly what I intended to do. During the flight, my old friend Anxiety barged in with the usual questions. Is this a good idea? Why What are you flying further and further away? Did you remember to pay your life insurance bill? I had to take a couple of deep breaths and remember what Ben said. This trip was necessary for us to exercise our independence. I'd only be gone for 10 days out of 365. There is no need for mom guilt. Everything was going to be fine. It was 5 a.m. when we landed, and the airport felt oddly comforting. Everywhere I looked, there were people that looked like me. For once, I was the majority. My anxiety was long gone. Instead, I just felt giddy, like I was a kid again. Like when you're young, all you want to do is grow up as fast as you can. But once you're an adult, you start chasing moments that make you feel young again. And being with both my parents definitely made me feel that way. And it's because they'll always see me as their baby, no matter how old I get. Like it's sweet, but it also comes with unsolicited advice. Like this golden rule, take care of your health and skin. I want to take a quick minute to thank Ritual for sponsoring this video. I've been using Ritual since 2020, and the reason why I keep coming back to them is that they use the highest quality supplements. They've got my tried and trues, like their multivitamin, their protein, and now they have Hyacera, which helps hydrate your skin from within. They formulated Hyacera using two of the best clinically studied ingredients, which are Hyabest and Ceratique. And they have both been shown to help minimize wrinkles and hydrate the skin. I have been taking one capsule every single day for the past two weeks, and I am loving the way my skin looks. It is glowing. It's such a simple way to integrate clinically backed skin supporting ingredients into my regimen. I've always loved the fact that Ritual has made everything traceable. A lot of companies like to hide their supply chain, but Ritual is extremely transparent, which makes makes me trust what I'm consuming into my body. If you are not happy with Ritual after 30 days, they will refund your money back, no questions asked. So if you would like to try Ritual for yourself, you can get 20% off your first month using my code GENM20. I love their Hyacera, but also their protein is bomb and their multivitamin is incredible. There's just a ton of different things that you can try out there. I will also leave a link in the description box, which you can click if you're interested in trying Ritual out for yourself today. On our first day, my parents met up with their friends and I decided to do the same. So my preferred way to explore a city is to have a friend show you around and no one could fill that role better than Joan. I've known her for 10 years and she took me on one of her famous Joan Day tours. Now something you have to know about Joan is that she's swift and sweet, warm yet direct. <laughs> like she's the type of person who will do exactly what she says. Just so accountable, and I left our hang feeling so inspired and enriched. The next day, we packed our bags and we hit the road heading south. So all of my mom's family lives in Kosong, which is like a five-hour road trip. So Appa suggested that we break up the drive by spending a night in Gyeongju. And during this road trip, I reflected a lot on a relationship. So Appa and I kind of had a rough relationship, especially in middle school. And that anger and stubbornness I felt at 11 stuck with us for decades. But luckily, <laughs> things took a turn in 2020. And then once London arrived, our relationship was able to heal even more. This new version of me, I actually hear him out and really reflect on what he has to say. And during this trip, 
I enjoyed all the knowledge he had and his energy. I appreciated hearing all these random facts and tidbits about birds and bridges. It's, it's funny because he prides himself on being an early adopter and so do I. And it made me realize that the very things that trigger me are also the things that I identify with. I guess we're all just mirrors for each other. Gyeongju is a dreamy, idyllic slice of Korean countryside. You feel like you're in a straight up Korean drama. I fell in love with all the hanoks and the Korean architecture just had me gagging. I like literally want to build a hanok in LA. It's also the home to many temples. I could have easily spent an entire day here, but we still had a few hours left on the road. We finally made it to Kosong. It's like a small beach town in the country. And this is where we'd stay for the rest of our trip. Meet my emo. She's always been my favorite. <laughs> Is that like fucked up to say? But, but really, I just love her. She's just so charismatic and so hardworking. Like she cannot keep still. She's constantly cleaning or cooking her endless panchans and meals for us, which by the way, were absolutely delicious. And if you take anything from this video, it's that Korea's national love language is food. Just food. If you can eat it, compliment it, make it, that is a sign that you care. For breakfast, Imo made oritang, which is kind of like, it's like duck soup. It's very similar to samgyetang. Oh, you soup Oh, thank you. Let's try the broth. Mmm, mm -hmm. it tastes like a richer, oh, oh, thank you. It's like a very rich chicken broth, seasoned perfectly. Mmm, mmm, it's so delicious. Hi. Hi. What are you to counteract all the eating, we did an insane amount of walking. And honestly, it was one of my favorite rituals to do every single day. Like, I'm a firm believer that humans need repetition. I think it grounds us. So we walked every day, rain or shine. This is one of the trails near my aunt's. And at the very top, you can see all of Kosong framed perfectly. This town is so scenic and all corners looked postcard worthy. I also loved all the health advice pinned on the trail. You can either see these as helpful tips or just straight up nagging, chanzori. Either way, you can't deny Korea prioritizes health. This is something I wish the U.S. would incorporate more. With each health tip I saw, I would step with more purpose and vigor. <sighs> Since all of Oma's family lives in Korea, I actually don't have many memories with anyone on her side, including both my grandparents who've passed. My grandma died in 2021, and it was Oma's first time visiting her grave. I actually wondered if she'd be emotional, but I think seeing her siblings gave her peace and strength. If I'm being honest, I'm gutted to have never had the chance to get to know my grandparents. This is my uncle's farm. My samchon and emo planted every single tree, plant, flower, stone on this plot of land. It's so impressive. He's only had it for two years and the progress is insane. And we hung out here every single day and it's definitely one of my favorite parts of the trip. I truly loved being out in nature and especially hanging out with Hiro. She reminds me of Chiki because she loves getting her tummy rubbed too. Despite us coming to the farm every day, it wasn't boring because every day was a little different. It's kind of like how I feel about life currently, where I don't need to do anything wildly different every single day. I think what makes an experience special to me is an activity where I can move my body, enjoy a view, and be with the people who make me feel safe and accepted. But one of the days, I actually switched it up. I have to get ready a little bit quickly today because I am meeting my friend Andy in Mazhan, which is just the craziest coincidence. Like he's been in Korea for a couple of months and it just so happens that his mom lives in a town that's 30 minutes away from, from my aunt's. We're gonna take a train to Busan. Wait, isn't there like, yeah, there, there's like a zombie movie called Train to Busan. Yeah, that's literally what I'm doing. Hopefully there's no zombies there. 
It's always such a surreal feeling to see a friend from home somewhere completely new. Exploring Busan with Andy was a refreshing adventure. It really reminds me of Seoul, but with a coastal feel. There are so many stores and restaurants that are consistently excellent. Like honestly, one day was not enough to take it all in. I went out in Busan with Andy yesterday and we freaking we uh, missed the bus. I got home at 2.30 because we had to take a cab from Busan all the way to Kosong. I am at the farm. My uncle dropped me off. My uncle has this little house planted here and it's really got everything that you need. We've got a little TV right over here, a little desk, a fridge that is stocked. Koreans definitely know how to prioritize food and meal times for sure, but it's so idyllic. Like I feel like I'm at um like a little getaway, you know? You know that service they have in LA where you have like just a little cabin in the woods? Like this is what it feels like, but this is a cabin in the, con the Korean countryside and it's so wonderful. On the final day, we went to have lunch at Omma's childhood home, and this is where my oldest Samchon now lives. And up until now, if I was at a family function with adults, I'd usually like separate myself to talk with the kids, or even like listen to music to drown out the grown-ups talking. But this trip, I did something wild. I actually listened and engaged. I paid attention to what everyone was saying, and surprisingly, I understood most of it. Language is so trippy because for whatever reason, I can understand more than I can speak. Now, my Korean is, is not great, but it's enough to understand. Sometimes it was like playing the game of taboo where you try to describe a word without saying the actual word. So if we were stuck, I would try to describe what I'm saying in very simple Korean words, and then they'd eventually get it and then we'd all laugh. It's, it's just like an amusing game for everyone if you have the patience to play. This was a great example of love beating language barriers. This trip was so healing for everyone, and I left feeling so much closer to my family and more connected to my roots. All I could think about was coming back next year. I know that life is constantly changing, and one day, circumstances won't be like this. But until then, this trip with my family perfectly encapsulates this liminal period where everything is exactly as it should be right now.